One thing about Barbados that I've noticed and I love is just how many people grow fruit trees in their yards. And it makes sense. The cost of food is higher here because of how much of it is imported. The tropical climate Barbados has makes it ripe for growing fruit, pun intended, and the relatively low maintenance required to grow them all make fruit trees a sensible decision. And the house I'm renting is no different, so in this video I wanted to show off the fruit trees growing in my backyard, of which I have benefited from over the last few months. On the side here is one of two guava trees. The guavas start out a dark green and slowly turn lighter as they mature. Unfortunately, the green monkeys living in the area don't let them stay on the tree that long. I've only been able to pick a few that were close to being ripe. Next up, bananas. For several months, I didn't notice any growth in these trees, so I assumed they were past the point of producing fruit. But just recently, one of the trees started growing an inflorescence, which is where the flowers are pollinated and start to form bananas. I have covered up the growing bananas to prevent birds and monkeys from eating them, as they had already started doing so. Right now, the bananas are about three inches long, and my landlord says they should be ripe in about two more months. I'll have to do a follow-up video sometime in the future to show whether the bag trick worked or not. The real champion of this backyard is the starfruit tree. The fruit is also called carambola, or five fingers, here in Barbados. This tree is on its second round of producing fruit for the year. The first round was a few months ago, in early autumn, and now in December it has an equally robust crop. Starfruit comes in two varieties, one sweeter and another sour. This tree is the sour variety, and I would describe the flavor as similar to the old lemon-flavored warhead candy that was popular when I was a kid. They're not as intensely sour as the candy is, but they do have a strong tartness and an intense flavor. Upon the recommendation from my landlord, I made a juice out of them, and that is where the real value lies to me. The juice was delicious, and not as intensely tart as the fruit is by itself. This fruit here looks inviting, but it's some kind of palm tree, and I don't believe it's edible. I'm not going to take a risk and find out, either. The two enormous trees here are mango trees. These two are much older and don't produce much fruit, and what they do produce is mostly gobbled up by the monkeys before the mangoes fully ripen. I managed to swipe a few mangoes off the tree by using this simple fruit picker. There's something extra delicious about eating fruit that has never been farther than 50 feet from your home. Lastly are two Jamaican ackee trees. Again, I had to use the fruit picker to grab the ripe ones that I could reach. Jamaican ackee trees are not widely found in Barbados, nor are star fruit. One important thing to note, the fruit are toxic if eaten before they are ripe. The fruit will split open when it is fully ripe and safe to eat, but you have to pick them soon afterwards as they tend to grow fungus when exposed to the outdoor elements. Inspired by all these trees, I bought a small papaya tree from the grocery store a couple months ago. Yes, you can sometimes find them for sale here. I planted it and started to water it, but after only a few weeks of growing, the monkeys ripped the tree off from its base, destroying it. It seems the monkeys either are attracted by the scent a young tree gives off and tear it up in search for food, or they hate the scent so much that they seek to destroy it. Either way, the monkeys won this round. The papaya tree only cost 450 US, so I will gladly buy another should the opportunity arise. Next time, I'll be sure to put fencing around it. That's all for this video. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.